All right, so for this, I'm making um, a fixture to hold fretboards down in a controlled, predictable manner so that uh, I can run the fret sliding rig over it. Um, the idea is I'm going to make a board that will always be mounted to the CNC that the fretboard gets, all fretboards I make from now on will get, get mounted to. So what it'll have, and it'll have, basically it'll just be a strip with a couple of locating pins so it's always placed in the same spot on the CNC so I don't have to find it every time. And then there'll be a V-groove down the center of it, down, the, down a, a line down it that I will line up the center line of every fretboard that goes on. And then that'll become the... The whole idea is to make sure that the center line of the fretboard is parallel with one of the axes, axes, one of the axes, so that it's lined up on the CNC correctly. So the idea is just put a V groove down the center of this so that I can just find center on the, on the fretboards. Those get stuck to this fixture with double stick tape and I can run my slots. And I can also do an outline, a profile cut with that as well. So that's what we're going to do. And first thing I need is a chunk of three quarter inch MDF about four inches wide. So we'll start there. All right, we've got our strip of three quarter inch MDF. It's about four inches wide. It's about 26 inches long. Um, we're just gonna stick some dub stick tape all up on it. I'm gonna wipe the sawdust off it though first. So it has a shot at not being loosened when the cutting forces come after it. Let's see if there's more dust there. It's all dust, it'll always have dust, but. Now we have a clean spot to throw some double stickies all in on it. Dunk. And do that. Cut. Okay, so this, I'm going to try to get it fairly close to aligned with, um, try to get it close to aligned with the axis because while I am going to cut it out, I don't want to waste a bunch of it. I want it to be somewhat aligned. Um, so to do that, I'm going to take an existing board with parallel edges laying around here somewhere. This will probably do. Okay, how about there? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so this is basically the location it will land. And uh, just try to make sure I get it roughly in the middle. Okay, that is our location. What I'm doing is, I'll make more sense here in just a minute. What I'm doing, maybe I won't. <laughs> It'll make. So what's going to happen is I'm going to cut. I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to do um, a couple of holes that are just for pins. They'll go through this into the table. I'm actually going to use the CNC to cut into itself to do two quarter inch locating pin holes. And those pins go all the way into this surface of the table. So those are positioning. Those will get it aligned. And then there'll be right next to that will be a couple other holes which will get... Um, uh, actually, I should make those go through as well now that I think about it. Yeah, what I'm, and so I'm going to redo the code, but I'm going to do a couple of holes for locating pins, a couple more holes for uh, bolts, for screws that will go down to hold, to fasten this thing down. And this will be like my second, like, permanent fixture for the CNC. The other one is where I put the vise the, for branding irons and stuff. But for this one, we're just going to go straight through. I'm going to do all of the holes through. That's what I'll do. Yeah, that'll work.
and that way it'll hold it and that way I have locating pins so we'll always go back in the same place every single time and that should take care of keeping things aligned centered then once those holes are in we'll do um, a flattening process just to get it all flat so like once the holes are in I'm going to actually mount it with those holes and then I'll flatten it and then I'll put the V carving on top to do the center line and a little bit of a naming thing um, so what I'm going to do first is go generate some new G code for cutting all those holes through and then I'll get back to you in a second uh, I've got the machine ready to go it's all zeroed and whatnot um, I'm not using the dust shoe because the holes are going really deep, way deeper than um, I have room for the dust shoe to be on. I'm also kind of uncertain. This is a down cut spiral bit, which is kind of bad. But it's what I've got, so I'm going to try to run it. But to go an inch and a quarter deep, I'm not going to have a lot of chip clearance space, so I have some mild concerns that I'm going to lose some steps here. Um, if that's the case, I will be standing by. It should be a fairly fast cut. It's going to be a dusty one because it's also going to do the profile. If the holes are successful, it's going to do the profile as well. So just making sure I'm ready for the, for the chaos that will occur when this does get started. Yeah. So I'm a little bit nervous about it, but it should be okay. We'll see. I'll be ready. So this is just going to be noisy and dusty. So we'll be ready to start it now. This is awkward, I should just go now. That was fun. Uh, it drilled fine. At first, I thought it was going to be a problem. Like, I was a little bit scared. It started to do the little smoking thing, but I think it's just because it was so deep and it couldn't clear all the chips. So, I think it did fine. I'm going to check it. I told it to do 26 thou, so a, or sorry, 260 thou, but so then a quarter should be loose in here, and it is. Next size up is too tight, which is perfect, because then I can drive that home. Yeah, that'll work. So the first thing I want to do then is countersink these things so that I can get the bolts in. Yeah, we're ready to like, I think I can dismount this. Yeah, I want to take this off. All right, I got to take this off of here, so. Uh, I'm going to dismount, countersink these holes, and then we'll do the next steps. This will be, okay, so now I've just got a little scrap of brass here. And I'm going to make the pins for the locating part of the part of this fixture. Just a quick little turn to diameter, and then I'll slice off a couple of them and use them for that. So we'll just do a quick. Actually, want to do a power feed here, like so. And just touch off fast. I'm going to take ten thou. Remove it. Just get a fairly clean, uh, clearly fairly clean surface. It's noisy. It's also in high gear. So. Okay. I don't actually have. Let me turn this back to low here. I don't actually have a fitting hole or a. I don't actually have a pin gauge or plug that'll fit this right now, but this diameter is very close, and I think if I get to this diameter, I'll be able to press it in. So we're going to use this as our target diameter, which is 262, it looks like. So that... Just a teeny bit smaller than our, yeah, 261, 262-ish, yeah. So that probably will press in. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I can get it to start right there. So I'm going to call that good. And now we'll just chamfer it in while I have it here to help it start. Then I'm going to switch out to the part and tool. Set it about parallel here. Right around the. Bring it back and we'll check it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, then we're going to figure out somewhere in here. Somewhere in there is is my partable zone right about there I'd say. Cut one off. are done with the pins. That's it. They're basically the same length. Cool. That is enough metal lathe time. Now we're going to get countersinks done. So I'll bring you back here in a second. Okay, so these don't quite fit, which is perfect, which means they're not slip. Oop, that one slips. Okay, so that one's good. How about this side? So that hole is slightly different sized than this one. I'm going to call that hole good. Yeah, I don't feel any, if there's any shake, it's very, very, very minimal. So I just want to enlarge this hole a barely any amount. So we're going to look for a bit that is just slightly over 250. And I think, let's see, quarter inch is 250. This, it looks like F. 257 is my only next option. Um, e is apparently exactly 250. And F being 257. Oh, you know what, though? It can't be 250. It's got to be just higher than 260. So G is 261. That leaves me one thou of clearance. That might be perfect. Okay. Let us attempt this. Just going to open this hole up just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's see what happens here. Does that slide in now? It's a tight fit. Oh, you know what happens? It's so tight that it's got capillary action is occurring here. Okay, I'm going to throw a really skinny bit in here. Say, 100 thou. And I'm going to go all the way through to the bottom and give a give it a passage, an air path. I don't know how long I've got to get into that. I think it should just be two, three quarter inch slabs here. We'll see. No, it's more than that. Okay. Let's see if I can. Just add a little more to the bit. It can't be much more than that, I don't think. Maybe. There it is. Okay, just giving this some clearance is all. Okay, that'll let some air flow through that. And then we'll go back to our other bit here. And Clear these guys out. That's too much. Clear this one out. There. That should now accept the pin nicely. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll work. Same for you. Oh yeah. Okay. So now we've got our pins, our locating zones here. That also means we still got a snug fit on these sides. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take this drill bit out, put this over here, put that up this way, 
And then we're going to knock these guys down into it a little bit. And then at some point I'll probably drop a little epoxy onto the top side just to keep them in. Yeah. All right. So we're going to tap these little guys. Actually, yeah, no, we're going to tap them in now. That'll work. Um, I think I'll use my dead blow to get them in there. That. We only need a little bit sticking out. That one's a bit, a bit loose. Okay. That's enough to locate with. There. That work. That means if all is aligned right, this should find its way into this hole with this one finding its way into that hole. That'll work. Yes, that locates nicely. Okay, so there's our there's our locating key. Come on. That's our locating game right there. Now we're gonna make sure that I'm going to put these out of the way. I want to put some inserts in here. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't go all the way through with these and come in from above, from underneath, to uh, grab it with some T-nuts instead of threaded inserts. One moment while I think about this. Yeah, I think I'd like to do that. So what I'll do, I think I can get to them all. The trick is whether or not I'm up against anything that would prevent it. Doesn't seem like it there. Mmm, might be there. That's the bolt. Yeah, that might be against, I might not be able to get into that. No, I won't be able to reach it. So I can't put a T-nut on this hole. And I wouldn't be able to get it on that side either. Uh, this one I probably could, but so what I'll do instead is threaded inserts. Okay. You know, I just have to find those buggers wherever I've got them. There we go. These will do. And we'll just make sure we use the long ones that will work best. Okay. So I'm gonna set myself up for that. I gotta figure out how big a hole I need and all that sort of stuff. So we'll bring you back here in a second. All right, I think these guys take an N size drill. That N hiding there. 300 thou, 301. Okay. And I'm just gonna throw these down in here. I'm gonna try it in the middle one first. Make sure. We're going to go deep enough as well here. Okay. And instead of using that screwdriver head on this, I'm going to put it on a bolt. Yeah. Okay. So now we just try to stay as straight as we can here. And we have no battery. Let's see if I can get that to pop free now. Yep. Is it low enough? Did we get it down far enough onto the table? I think we're up a little bit yet. Yeah, I'm going to grab a washer. Grab a big old fender washer. And put that between it and the nut. And use that as a compressing method. And just try to sink that a little bit further in. But it's in there well at this point. It's very well seated. clear of this and I can probably sand it flush if I wanted to. Uh, 
There we go. Now all we got to do is flatten these things because right now they stick up a fair bit. So I'm going to get them flat and move on to the next step here. So I'm just literally going to take the prepping weapon and sand it smooth. I'll be right back. All right. So we've got the threaded inserts set in and it's now flat. They don't stick up enough to bother me. Now we've got our pins here. <clears throat> we'll set that in. Check it. Oh yeah, that's good. That's really good. Okay, so I'm going to go grab a I'm going to grab a countersink now and just put a couple of countersinks. I could counter bore it, I guess, but I think we'll countersink. Countersinking is going to be easier cuz I have countersinks. I don't have any counter bores. Excuse me. And uh, I'm going to countersink it pretty well so that it's below the surface of the table. Switch out our mattress because I think the drill needs to be used for this. And pull that out. We'll go grab us a counter sink, which I hide from myself from time to time. I found it. Ha. And literally just that'll work. That ain't going anywhere. That is nice and snug. Okay. And there's plenty of room. There's like an eighth of an inch depth of being able to. Yeah, that's solid. So there's a lot of room for me to flatten with, and uh, I think we're ready to do that next. So bring you back here in just a second. Okay, really fast. Their countersinking's done. It's mounted to the machine. Now it's bolted down nice and snug. The alignment pins are working beautifully. I put in a big old one inch, uh, I think it might actually be an inch and an eighth diameter uh, flat bottom dishing bowl, dish, dishing bit um, that I use to flatten the table. I use it to flatten a lot of things. So. I got a little G-code. This will not take long at all to run. This might may, maybe take two or three minutes. Um, but we're going to flatten the top of this and then see where we are after that. But I think it'll be flattened and then V-carve the groove. So I'm going to get it going now. All right, it's flat. Um, and now we've got a V-bit in there. This is going to take a lot less time too. This is going to be one big line and a little bit of lettering, um, but otherwise this will be the last cut and we should be done. Uh, yeah, the flattening went beautifully. It was perfect. It worked out fine. So we're going to run now. Here we go. All right, we've got it uh, V-carved now. I'll show you pictures here in a second, but for the moment I'm going to get a little, sorry, I'm off camera grabbing some gloves because I'm going to give this thing a bit of protection. So this is how the fixture will sit on the machine when in use. And there's a V-groove center line and then it says fix, fi fretboard fixture. Um, the fretboard itself has a center line that we'll use to align to this center line. This center line is a parallel to the X axis, but the fretboard will get stuck down with double stick tape, which is kind of hell on this raw MDF surface, especially since the top of it has, that skin has been taken off. So I'm going to coat it now with some uh, shellac so that it'll have some durability. I'm going to start with shellac, but I have a feeling I'm going to end up with polyurethane at some point here. Um, but I want to make it, you know, stand up to the rigors of having many fretboards placed upon it over over the years, over the years. So I'm just going to soak this rag here and just send some on in. And I know this thing's going to soak it up like crazy, but Start it, or start it lightly and 
and just get a good amount. In fact, we're just going to dump it because I know this stuff will take a, a large number of applications here to get. Okay, I have been agonizing over and over for, as you've seen, long, far too long about binding and purfling and rosettes and stuff. Gabriel suggested maybe using the rosewood as the binding and then maybe a little bit of purfling between the uh, rose the rosewood and the walnut will make it a little less dramatic because when they're wet and next to each other they look very similar. But uh, at the moment I'm still not entirely so totally decided but I'm going to make I'm going to take a second and do some ex experimenting. I'm going to perform an experiment. And that experiment is I'm going to make some really thin pieces. This is very thin. I'm going to make some very thin bits of rosewood. And this, this is the sides. This came from the sides. There's a ton of figure in this. A ton of figure in the whole board, but there's a ton right here that could be a good candidate for rosette. So I think I'm going to try my hand at making a rosette. This may, as has happened in the past, fail colossally, or I surprise myself. Sometimes that happens too, and something nice comes out of it. So we're going to take. There's a very thin bits of rosewood, blah, rosewood and very thin bits of walnut. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to do like a, a pie shape or what. I, I'm trying to come up with, I want to make sure I show off the figure in this walnut. So those pieces need to be a bit bigger. And it also helps kind of tie things together. It carries the back and sides wood to the front of the guitar. Um, and to keep, if I can use this rosewood, it kind of puts some continuity between the walnut and the rosewood that way, um, which may lead me to being all right with having the uh, having the binding be rosewood. So we're kind of seeing, not sure what I'm going to do yet. But so I've got these little bits of offcuts, and I'm going to make them much thinner. This one is almost an eighth inch thick. And I want to get close to like maybe a 32nd, maybe slightly a bit small, slightly a bit larger, about a millimeter. Um, because that will, that will fit into the rosette slot a lot better. So I'm just going to go through the lovely process of drum sanding these down to a thickness that I'm comfortable working with. It'll make it easier to slice into the small pieces that I'm thinking of using. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to get this, I'm going to cut this off, so I'm only going to use about this much, maybe this much of it. And uh, I'm going to get things a bit thinner. So you're going to get some boring music for a little bit while I figure this part out and get it thick enough to play with. All right, we hit about 30 thou on them, which is actually probably fine. Uh, it's a little thinner, but it's going to be easier to work with at that thickness. It's much more pliable. The walnut is very pliable compared to the rosewood. You can tell which wood is denser. It's pretty interesting. Um, so what I've got to do now is figure out what I'm going to do next with this. Okay, so after some drawing, I've decided Something like, oh boy, that's tough to see. Something like this we're after. Just a round ring that's about, I think, 13 or 14 millimeters wide. And then some little strips. So the big chunks are going to be walnut and the small chunks are going to be rosewood surrounded by this. And this will be tough to see, I think. But I've got these really densely figured uh, maple strips um, laying around. So I figured I'd try those and see what I, was gonna, see what I can do with them. Um, the, the rosewood strips are easy. They're squared pieces. They're not tapered. The only tapered ones are the walnut bits. And so those are six millimeters wide. So all I got to do for the rosewood is cut some to six millimeters. And I think this edge is straight enough. We're just going to run over the bandsaw and slice off a piece of six millimeters. But I have a tip, so I'll show you that too.
So I've got this really thin floppy stuff that's going to go right here, right? Well, that's going to put almost all of it. See, I can even push my finger down into. So that's not going to support this stock very well at all. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this chunk of hardboard. I'm going to slide it in first, and then I'll clamp it down. I'm going to cut in a way so that it's all the way past. And use this as kind of my zero clearance for slicing off that quarter inch wide bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to kick on the saw here and cut a slot here just real quick. You'll just do it. Here we go. There. And now I'll just stop the saw here. And you can see now, much better support all the way around the blade. No risk at all of uh, the, bar, the part falling through. And I'm just going to take a, take a C-clamp here real fast and uh, just hold this piece in place so it's one less thing that my hands have to care about. Okay, there. Now that won't move. Now I can take my nice piece of rosewood, slide it against this fence, and be fully supported as I cut through. Seems simple, but you don't think of these things until you start to cut them. So, speaking of cutting them, let's cut. All right, so we've got our six mil bit. We got our small bits that are going to sit actually vertically. I just didn't want to get them super, super small. Um, and then the walnut. Um, the walnut, I need to get a straight edge. I think it'll be a lot easier to get my geometry working if I do. So this edge is straight. I'm just going to go over to the bandsaw and do the same trick and rip it as wide as I possibly can here and just get this edge straight because this edge being straight is more helpful, I believe. I suppose I could go at it the other way. No, I would like to go at it from this side as much, much as possible. So I'm going to go over and just rip this off, rip this to a parallel width. So we'll do, I'll just come back. You need to see this. Be back in a second. All right. That is now straight and nice and parallel, so I can use this edge to get some angles from it. That'll be useful in a second here. I have my bevel gauge around here somewhere, and I think it's going to come in handy. Um, I will grab that, and then we'll... We'll get some, we'll get some marking going here. Hold up. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed this, but this drawing is set up as basically an eight segmented piece, which because it's my very first attempt at anything like this, I went with a very easy to make uh, mark out uh, 45 degrees. That's what the angle has to be for these things. So what I'm gonna do, uh, thanks, and I'm gonna, this is gonna evolve a little bit as I figure out what the heck I'm working with here. Um, I'm gonna start on this end, and I have to, so the grain direction on here, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but the grain direction I wanna run uh, outside. I don't want it to run radial. Excuse me one sec. <laughs> yeah. Oof. I want the grain direction to run linearly, not um, this way. I want it to be lengthwise, not widthwise. On the quarter inch bit, this little six mil stuff definitely wants to run lengthwise, but this stuff I want to go long ways. Um, or from the outside, not, not circumferenti circumferentially? There's a word for that. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Don't want it to be, I believe this is radial or something. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut an angle, and I'm just right now at the very second deciding which, which way the wide way, which way the wide way, which end, which side of this is the wide end, which is the long end or the short end. And I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to have to be consistent. Whatever I choose, I want to use that same pattern all the way around because I don't want to have the figure acting weird one way and not the other way. So and hold that up to there and just really quickly see if I can't free myself a nice little piece. So I'm not going to go full on wedge shapes, but we're going to get close to triangles, I think. Oh, you know what? That isn't right. 
Hang on a sec. Yeah, no, 45 isn't right. I need to do 22 and a half. Burp, burp, burp. Yeah, that is way off. Good. I'm glad I caught that before I got too far. Need 22 and a half. So I need to hit my bevel gauge set to that. Be back in a second. When in doubt, call in the technology. Okay, there's 90. Zero at that. This little guy gets to become 2.5. Too far. 2.2.5. Just that easy. Ooh, moving things. 22 and a half. Tighten that down now. Dang. Now we've got the right diam dang diagonal. Diagonal. Okay. Now we can use this little guy to figure out our actual angles. That's much better. Alright, so I'm gonna put this here. I like this. And I'm gonna mark it, I guess. Well, I need a fence that's better than this little guy because this thing's. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's not fine. It's not great. It's not a great fence. Yeah, it's a terrible fence, actually. So I'm gonna put a block there, is what I'm gonna do, as soon as I figure out where a block might be. Alright, got some tape. Just set this so that everything seems about parallel. This does not have to be super precise because when it goes under the under the fretboard, it won't. All of my inaccuracies can get buried under the fretboard. Is what it kind of comes down to. I'm going to put one on this side here so that things stay put. Just that. And then I'm going to put one across this. I'm not sure if this is going to be in my way or not. We'll see. Let's put one across this way. Now that ought to hold things well enough for me while I go after this with a block. So now I should be able to. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to reset this so that I've got blade on both sides. Um, because that's a lot easier to work with. All right. And now we can take this guy, put him on either side, and use it as my, as my guide here. So I can come over here, put a block on it like Sir, which one? This side. Okay. This is my, my uh, miter fence here. I'm just going to use this to uh, guide my saw. Like that. Then I can just hang on to the block and go blink, 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 blink. This, the block isn't going anywhere. And the saw is cutting down straight along till I hit the MDF. Which I did a while ago. That's perfect. There is cut numero uno. Then we go like this. I need to get. I need to make sure I leave some reference to its overall length because I need to make sure I have it long enough to fit. So I'm gonna take a quick look at it from this angle here and say how many 30 seconds do we have to keep? We need one and five eighths would be enough. So now we're going to come down here. We're going to say one and five eighths. It's actually quite tiny. Now we go the other direction. With it, we go this way. And use the block again. 
good thing both sides of this are parallel. Okay, and this is going to be a little oversized, which is fine. All right, like that, and then we come at it with... I can't get at it with this saw. We're going to try this, uh, this new saw that I just got. It's going to be a cross-cut operation. Got to open the package first. Could have done this sooner, been prepared, but hey, why? Why do that? Dun, 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 dun. Get out of there. Go on, get out of there. Oof, that's a sharpie, sharpie thing. Okay, now we can try that with this guy. Or I could go to the other side of zero, but this will work. We'll go. Hey, yeah, I like this. Yeah, this will work. This works nicely. Cuts quite well, I might say. There we go, and we are through. We've now got, I guess it is a wedge shape. Now we can hold this up to our part, our drawing. Oh, hey, you know what? I screwed up. Yeah. I'll show you what I did, and then I'm going to go with a better zoom anyway, so. Okay, so those cut well enough. I got very lucky on that knot I was trying to lose or trying to avoid as it just happened to fall in one of the waste pieces anyway, so that was lucky. So these guys fit. These guys fit quite well, I might say. I'm thinking, and that goes there. I'm thinking I may flip them all over so that I can have a better cut because some of these do have some not as pretty cuts as I was hoping for. And then uh, I've got to work out the assembly process. How do I get these together with little pieces of these together with little pieces of these in between? Right? And these being taller might make that a bit of a challenge. Um, I'm not sure if I want to even attempt to turn this into a string. I'm scared to try, frankly. So what I might do instead... Is I might leave every... I think if I leave these pieces big, I can put a little tension. If I make these guys tiny, if I can get a little bit of tension to squeeze them together, that might be enough. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do first is snip a few that are, I don't actually need a, a sequence on this. I'm just going to set these aside, take this, I'm going to see if I can use a scissors on these. I'm not sure if I can, I'll we'll find out. Yeah, it holds up. I'm worried about, um, tear it out, tearing them out. And then I'm going to cut some some pieces boy you know I'm gonna make I'm gonna make these is what I'm gonna do make them the short bits and I'm gonna get some side cutters instead of scissors because they'll sort of chomp down instead of shear, try to shear and I think that'll help so I'm just gonna try to make a bunch that are about It'd be nice if I had a depth stop is what I would like but I don't so what I'll do instead is I'll just get a, a line on it right there so if I snip there oh yeah that'll work that didn't hurt this at all although I sent my piece of flying okay I think that might work 
is to just take... Now I think I can put this piece on it and do... that and just make a bunch of them this size. Yeah, I think that'll do it. We'll see. I think I might need one more pair. So, bink, 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 bink. No, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I might be good. Bink, 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 and I think I'm going to cut two more just so I have spares. And that one's enough. That one will work. Okay. So there's some extras. And then we'll do the same with this. Um, actually, hold on. I want to make sure I do this with some thought input here. These guys first need to get a little bit of planing done to them so that they're crisp on each side, which is not a big deal. Um, I hope it's not a big deal. <laughs> and then, so I need eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. And so uh, I want to leave them long so that I can apply tape on the outer edges and pull them together with these guys sandwiched in. That way there's room for some tape, I think. I think that's how I want to do this. Yeah, I'm not certain. Not entirely certain. It may just be one of those um, take your time moments and just hold things in place, but I'd sure like to be able to have them all like, you know, prepped. I think I'm going to go with, yeah, I'm not sure I can use tape. I think I'll just go with, I'll just put another line on there I'll go this far. It's way more than I need, so. Nice if that was hanging over a little differently, but that's all right. I think there's one. I just need eight of these. Two. Three. Oh, wow. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And one more. In case. Okay, some spares. I've got my set of spares. I got a spare, complete set of spares, just in case. Hope I don't need them, but if I do, they are available. All right, so that's those. Now I just have to figure out how to get them rough to the. I need. To, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna clamp a board. I need to get these edges nice. So I'm going to clamp a board with a stop and then use the plane to just clean up like a shooting board. All right, let's do that. I'll get set up for that here in just a second. Mm -hmm. 